Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm a former high school history teacher, so I make sure that everyone's paying attention. And um, so, good, my name is Anand Mari, and I'm um, very pleased to welcome you all to the Federal Reserve Bank of New York for the Leveraging Tax Time to Build Financial Capability Expert Symposium. I want to begin by thanking the Center for Social Development at Washington University in St. Louis, Cities for Financial Empowerment Fund, Intuit Tax and Financial Center, J.P. Morgan Chase, and the New America Foundation um, for working with us to present this event. And before I continue, I have to state my comments here or reflect my own views and not the views of the Federal Reserve Bank of New York or the Federal Reserve System. Um, I want to take a minute to explain um, how the Federal Reserve Bank of New York conducts community outreach in order to give you a better sense on how to engage with us in the future. Um, the bank's outreach and education function is responsible for engaging with the communities across the New York, uh, the New York Fed's district, which includes New York State, the 12 northern counties in New Jersey, Fairfield County, Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. And our efforts aim to make relevant, objective information available to a broad uh, group of constituents as possible. Uh, through our collective outreach efforts, the bank impacts the communities we serve, strengthens public trust in the organization, and leverages the skills and the talents of my very talented colleagues here across the bank. Um, specifically, in connection to today's event, we focus our efforts in low and moderate income communities on topics aligned with the bank's mission and expertise, including household credit, community indicators, small business, education, workforce development, and financial inclusion. And that's the direct tie into why we're talking about financial inclusion. And our financial inclusion initiative advances financial stability and sustainability of low and moderate income communities in the second district by collaborating with community organizations, financial institutions, government agency, and other stakeholders as reflected by the attendees here, and exploring how research and other bank assets can assist them in, with making informed decisions and developing effective interventions. And I'm going to highlight three specifically, four actually. First, we have launched a community of interest project to discuss emerging trends and key developments with leading nonprofit organizations, some of the members who are here today. Second, as members of the Committee on Payments and Market Infrastructure at the Bank of in International Settlements, that's a handful, mouthful, we worked on a consultative report on payment aspects of financial inclusion. And the report highlights this, that central banks, the role that central banks could play in influencing payments-based financial inclusion strategy. And we care about it for two reasons. One, because the Federal Reserve Bank and the New York and the Federal Reserve System is responsible for maintaining a safe and uh, reliable payment system. And two, we care about promoting household financial stability. Um, third, I, I want to, third initiative I want to highlight for you is that we're visiting cities across the second district um, to discuss with regional stakeholders, including community-based organizations, the local needs regarding financial inclusion and, and present one of our tools, which is unavailable on our website, called Community Credit, that informs the public about the levels of credit inclusion and credit assessed by county. We are trying to, for those of you, the, the data wonks out there, we're trying to get down to the zip code level to talk about credit stress and so forth. We'll get there, but right now we have it at the county-wide level. Um, lastly, we're partnering with the Department of Labor to explore strategies to incorporate financial capabilities um, um, into workforce development programs given the work, given the requirements of the Work Innovation and Opportunity Act of 2014. Those of you that are familiar with it. Simply put, we are co-hosting this meeting because we believe that the topics discussed today are timely and essential for our constituents in the Second District and in the United States. As you, as you enjoy the rich and informative discussions today, we ask that you follow the following rules. First, you, we're going to abide by the Ch Chatham House rules for all discussions with New York Fed staff members and presenters. That means first, you are free, of course, to discuss, use this information shared during the session, uh, but we ask that you not attribute a comment to the New York Fed staff or, about, or your fellow participants. In addition, we ask that you, as a courtesy, refrain from tweeting or otherwise publishing in real time during the sessions. Okay, so um, that's that. And I have a couple more rules for you that I would like to, and then my colleagues will be emphasizing to our uh, several times today. 
Please, there's no photography or filming with camera, cell phone, or other mobile device. Many high school kids try to play with that rule, and they get their cell phones taken away, so please don't <laughs> fall into that rule. Um, please silence your mobile device. Um, the women's restrooms are right outside the auditorium on the right, and the men's is through the first set of elevator doors on the right-hand side. Uh, and if you do need to make a phone call, please go up to the 13th floor. One of, our, one of our staff members will be happy to help you to go up to the 13th floor. There are specific call rooms for you to make phone calls with. Um, and then during the Q&A session, there's going to be some mics that are going to be set up for you. So please make sure you wait for the mic so we can get this recorded. And also to let you know that the, uh, the whole event will be photograph uh, photographed and filmed. So thank you again from the, New York, uh, from the New York Fed for coming. And I want to introduce to you the next speaker, who's going to be Sally Durden. From, she's an executive vice president from J.P. Morgan Chase. Now I give you Sally. Thank you and good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I work on the Chase side of J.P. Morgan Chase and I'm head of strategy for all of the Chase branded consumer and small business facing businesses. So financial empowerment and the needs of our low and moderate income consumers are very much a part of my day to day role partnering closely with the J.P. Morgan Chase Foundation. So it's a pleasure to be here and tell you about some of the activities we have underway. Um, as you probably know, J.P. Morgan Chase is deeply committed to building products and supporting community partners who are creating affordable, technology-driven solutions to meet the needs of our low and moderate income customers. Examples of products are our prepaid card, Liquid, and tools like the Chase mobile app, which have helped millions of people to enter the banking system and build better financial habits. But we all know that consumers still face very significant challenges. Recently, the J.P. Morgan Chase Institute, uh, which is led by my colleague Deanna Farrell and Fiona Gregg, head of research, who's here with us today, have done research looking at actual transaction data from our customers and have found that households across the income spectrum struggle with a surprising level of cash flow volatility month to month. They've also seen that the typical family doesn't, not surprisingly, have the liquid assets on hand that they need to weather that cash flow volatility. In the Institute's recently released port, uh, it was identified that, ta oops, and I apologize, I, I've accidentally hit the screen here, it's not relevant to my remarks. Um, <laughs> tax refunds account for fully 16% of the observed volatility in monthly income. And for many low-income families, the tax time refund is the single largest sum of money they receive throughout the year. This provides a unique opportunity uh, for these families to begin saving, creating financial plans, and setting financial goals. Our report highlights the importance of using these um, types of predictable spikes in income as important opportunities to help people begin to save. Tax time is unique in that it allows our, to, our consumers um, where they are to, and provides us an opportunity to interact with consumers with products and services that are immediately relevant to their financial lives, which, as you all know, is incredibly important to beginning uh, to help people exercise that savings muscle. For this reason, J.P. Morgan Chase has committed almost $7 million in the last two years to supporting financial capability programs at tax time, including programs managed by a number of partners here today. This is part of our larger $45 million two-year commitment to support nonprofit partners working to improve the broader financial health of our underserved communities. We support tax preparation assistance, financial coaching, and products encouraging savings at tax time. In addition, in the last two years, 300 J.P. Morgan Chase employees have volunteered more than 4,000 hours to provide free tax preparation services at VITA sites across the country. But despite the recent increase in funding for VITA programs, we know that many of our nonprofit partners are being forced to do far more with fewer resources, which is why we're interested in better understanding how to use technology to increase our partners' reach and their effectiveness in the delivery of services. 
For example, we just announced a $500,000 grant to the Food Bank of New York City, who's represented here today, to test virtual VITA and the integration of financial coaching into, uh, to help improve the delivery and convenience of tax preparation services and to expand the Food Bank's great work to additional communities. We're also excited to announce a $600,000 grant to support the work of Washington University that shows that low-touch, simple changes to the tax filing process can have a significant impact on uh, consumer savings. In addition to, creating, to increasing awareness and maximizing tax refunds, free tax preparation services offer a great entry point for broader one-on-one -on -one financial coaching services. We're supporting programs across the country to better understand how tax time can be leveraged um, as an on-ramp to provide ongoing support for consumers in improving their financial health. Finally, we support partners that apply lessons from behavioral economics and um, behavioral design to test and evaluate new models uh, to promote savings at tax time. We're working with these partners to capture and share relevant insights with other practitioners to help improve programs across the country. For example, we supported the toolkit by Washington University to help Vitasites apply the great insights from Washington University's refund to savings program to help more clients save at tax time. The toolkit is available, uh, actually it was available at, at the entrance today where you checked in. I'm sure it'll be available after the meeting as well. So we encourage you to take a copy of that and help us in promoting that in your local communities. Improving financial health not only helps individuals thrive, but also supports more resilient, inclusive communities and local economies. It helps individuals start and expand businesses and invest in education. Um, to access better economic opportunities and improve their lives. This helps our customers, clients, communities, and the broader economy. We're very excited to be here today to explore what is working and how we can continue to partner to promote financial health at tax time and throughout the year. Thank you for your partnership and your continued participation. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we are very delighted to be here today and to host this event. And I just will take a minute to acknowledge all of the partners that work so hard to make this event happen. And you know, of course, it's big, big team. Um, so the Center for, so uh, for Social Development, of course, with the leadership of Jenny running this event, and a lot of the other team members here today, um, Dana and Meredith and Sam, um, who are missing. Missing everyone who, who join um, who join us and City of Financial Empowerment Fund, the Federal Reserve, into it of course who couldn't have all this work made happen without them um, and J P Morgan of Chase that we are so fortunate to have us funding us and New America Foundation so it was really a big team effort that um, goes credit goes to everyone. Um, Jonathan and I were supposed to do the housekeeping for the event and, uh, by the Fed, and they heard us a little bit doing some practice about saying the housekeeping, but they, took, they decided that we are not eligible to do this role anymore. So I'll just invite Jonathan to do some more welcoming and introduce our keynote. So thanks so much, everyone. I mean, everything is going well, but honestly, the House rules through interpretive dance, it, you know, you just get it more. I mean, it sort of makes more sense. Uh, I uh, want to thank Mikal and her team. Um, it's a real pleasure to be a partner with them. They are um, uh, full of great ideas and enthusiasm to put together um, what we're going to be able to enjoy today. And I'm particularly excited today because I think that we've assembled this incredibly smart and accomplished group of people under one uh, under one roof, um, and uh, as Sally mentioned, we can really talk about what works. Um, and I, we don't always get to take our aspirations um, and our, our learning uh, and really translate it into um, real proof points about what can work, what that means, uh, and how that translates 
into programming and policy, into really making a genuine, literal difference in people's lives. So um, we're really excited that that's um, so clearly the theme and the, and the focus of this work.